And let's read until uh, the end of the chapter. Okay, let me just uh, read and uh, follow me silently uh, in your, uh, with your Bible. Said, verse 5 says, And said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me, and keep my commandments, and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence, and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now these are thy servants and thy people, whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and thy, by thy strong hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant, and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper, I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for, uh, for I was the king's cupbearer. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for the, this morning, uh, what we have already uh, learned uh, during our Bible classes. I pray, Lord, that you continue to teach us through the preachings that we're going to hear and be submissive to the word of God. I pray, Lord, that you give us wisdom. As we look at the prayer of Nehemiah and um, how um, he was ready, dear Lord, uh, not only to pray but to do something uh, about the burden that he, you have placed in his heart, I pray, Lord, that you use this passage as a challenge to us um, and, and to give us more understanding, to dig deep into your word and to be able to apply the principles in our lives. Bless me, dear Lord, as I preach. May you be the one to be glorified in our midst for all these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, thank you. You may all be seated. <laughs> Let me just... Uh, pull my notes. Hello. Okay, so last, uh, last week we, we uh, uh, took on verse number 1 until verse number 4 and we have learned that uh, Nehemiah was in ruins uh, basically emotionally and was broken over the fact that he heard uh, what was happening over there, in, uh, over there in Jerusalem. And we saw that Nehemiah was inquiring about that and uh, we learned that something last week that uh, whatever you inquire about, whatever you want to know, something is uh, basically something that takes priority in your life. Okay, uh, what are the things that are you cu you're curious about? What are the things that you want to know? Are you curious about the Word of God? Are you curious about worldly things? If you're curious about worldly things, then that takes priority in your life. Now, Nehemiah here, we saw in the very first uh, verses of uh, uh, chapter one, we saw that he was curious about his own people and Jerusalem, and this is something. Uh, that uh, and we are slowly taking a glimpse at the character of Nehemiah. He was not only curious, but he was also uh, what they call this broken-hearted about what happened to what is happening in Jerusalem. Remember that it's important to for us to remember that this is 140 years into the captivity of Israel, and if we are comparing it to our time, 140 years. Just imagine 140 years is a long time. These are a few generations, okay, uh, inside those 140 years. So uh, imagine if you come here to Cambodia as a refugee, or, or your great grandparents came to Cambodia as a refugee, and then uh, bore your parents, which grew up in Cambodia, and then uh, you were born in Cambodia, raised up in Cambodia, your language is Khmer, you're Cambodian. You don't really have anything to do with what's happening over back there at your great grandparents' country, 
right? You're Cambodian, you're Khmer, you're speaking Khmer, you don't, you don't really know, uh, you don't really have to know what was happened or what happened in the country of your great grandparents. But here, Nehemiah, even though he hasn't set foot in Jerusalem, he was willing to know what was happening. Okay, his brethren actually went there to know. Okay, he wanted to know. And when he knew that they were in uh, ruins, that they were in uh, reproach, people were making fun of them, mocking them, and they were not safe really because there was no wall, that he was broken hearted. And we saw that the first thing he did was to pray to the Lord. And that is something we learned last week that not that most of the time that is not our default response to problem that is not our default response to burden our default response is, lo is to be logical to think uh, to look at this in a logical way how can i solve this how can i do this or that and when all else fail we pray but then Nehemiah, we saw that he prayed first he knelt down he cried not only prayed but he also fasted Okay, this was something that is really coming out of a contrite heart. Something that's really uh, that's that bothered him, and he he went uh, he, he went and brought it to the Lord. So today we're going to look at that prayer of Nehemiah, and there are a lot of interesting things that he said. Actually, he said a mouthful, a lot of things he said in this prayer, and something that we can learn, and a lot of principles we can learn in this prayer. First, in verse five, he says, "And said, this is his prayer." I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. First, we can see here that Nehemiah prayed to the correct person to pray to. Right? Most of the time we pray, but we don't really pray to God. We, uh, maybe we close our eyes and, and, and say a few words, but we're not really praying to God. We're not really bringing it into the throne of grace. And a lot of times, before we even pray, we already talk to several people. We already talk to our family. And we already talk to maybe our friends, close friends. And this is something that is dangerous in our lives. The people who we go to first are actually the gods in our lives. If you have a problem, if you have a burden, and you go to your uh, parents first, then they're your gods. If you go to your close friends first, then they are God's. You know, we should go to God, our Father, first because first and foremost, He has the solution. Now, none of these people have the solution. Uh, not our parents, not even the brethren of Nehemiah, right? When he heard, he didn't talk about it to, uh, about it to them. He went straight to the Lord. And, and the good thing about going straight to the Lord is when we pray to God, He will guide us to the right people to talk to. After that, because we pray to the Lord, God can use people in our lives, spiritual people, and God can give them wisdom and guide us to talk to them and see the wisdom in those things that they are saying. But provided we come to God first and not make Him a last resort in our lives. Okay, we pray to God first, ask Him for wisdom, and He'll lead us to the right people. Now, the rest of His prayer is seen in verse number 6, okay, uh, until, uh, until verse 11, is uh, His prayer. And we have just read that. Now, but in verse 6 here, it says here that, Let thine ear now be attentive, and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night. First, we see here that He's getting the attention of God. Okay, he's saying that, Lord, please listen to me. God, please listen to me. I want to say something. I want to, to give you my heart and to pour out what is in my heart. Please listen to me. And this is a blessing because as believers in Christ, the Almighty Creator listens to us when we're praying. And that, this is something we take for granted, really. We take this for granted. If, if we are friends with a powerful person, we're confident, right? For example, you break the law, maybe just... just uh, 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 traffic violation if you have a friend that is really powerful influential you will not worry about it right you go straight to the person call his number give it to the police and not, not, and then no harm done but then we forget that on our uh, speed dial if, if i might say it's the creator it's the almighty god himself that we can call at any time not and god listens to god listens to us and and nehemiah was calling for god's attention and we know reading uh, the, the rest of the passage that god heard him Especially in uh, chapter 2, God showed him slowly what steps to take in, in, in order to, to do something about this burden. But God listens to us. God can listen to us. And the Bible is filled with promises of God listening to us. How, how God listens first, first uh, what, what grabs uh, God's attention. First is 
like, like Nehemiah, a sincere search for the Lord. If you're really searching for the Lord and searching for His will, He's going to hear you. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 13, And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with what? With all your heart. It's not a half-hearted prayer. It's a prayer that is a saying to God, Lord, you're all I need. You're, Lord, you're, you're, the, you're the one who can, who can help me with this. You're the only one who, who, who has the answer. I am, I'm, and I'm submitting this thing to you. If you seek God with all your heart, not just a, a half-hearted prayer, not just a prayer that you say once and then you don't pray about it again. It's seeking Him with all your heart God is going to listen to you. And not only that, a sincere search for the Lord, but another thing here is a sorrowful and a softened heart. If we're, uh, Psalms 51, 17 says, The sacrifices of God are a, uh, are, are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. And this is something that Nehemiah has right now. He has a broken heart for the people of Jerusalem, for his own people, uh, actually, and God listened to him. Not only that, but God listens to us if we are submitted to him. If, our at if we have an attitude of submission to him. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because what? We keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. God will not listen to someone or answer the prayer of someone who is in direct disobedience of his will. Why? Because a person who is disobeying God will not pray for the will of God. Right? But a person who is in a humble attitude, submissive attitude to God, will pray for the right things. Will pray for the will of God. And if that is the will of God, God is going to give that to us. Again, as, as a point that uh, we have made uh, last week, prayer changes us. It doesn't change the will of God. Right? As we pray and we pray to God, we notice that uh, as we pray, sometimes our prayer at the end is completely different from what we prayed for in the beginning. Why? Because as we seek for God's will, God will slowly change our heart, guide us, and to, to pray really for what is, uh, what, his, what is His will, and then give us uh, those things. Now, these are just some things that grabs the attention of God. And Nehemiah was trying to grab the attention of God. Now, Lord, listen to me. Okay, hear my prayer. And verse 6 tells us also uh, here that he was praying day and night. First thing that we see in his prayer was his prayer was a fervent prayer. It's not just something that he prayed once and forgot about it. The Bible says he was praying day and night. And if you're going to go to chapter 2, the answer of, God's, uh, uh, of God to his prayer was really months before God answered his prayer. So that means day and night he was praying for months, praying day and night every time. He was in that attitude of prayer, of praying without ceasing, telling God, Lord, please grant me this. Lord, please help me. Lord, please help us do something about this. And he was praying about this day and night. Not just something that, uh, na parabang, like, like what we're saying, Lord, please uh, give me this and I trust that you're going to, uh, to do this for me. And then we stop praying about it. That is, if, if we do that, that is something that's not really, really not sincere in praying about that. Now we see that ne Nehemiah's prayer was fervent. It was not a just one and done prayer. It was a prayer that was his doing day and night. And here, something that uh, uh, really grabbed Grab my attention here. Let's continue reading here in verse 6. Day and night. For the children of Israel, thy servants, okay, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. We see that Nehemiah made this prayer personal. A personal prayer. Nehemiah had nothing to do with what was happening in Jerusalem. Technically, Right? He's already a few generations removed from, from the disobedience of his people, from being taken captive. Technically, he has nothing to do with it, but he owned, he, he owned the sin. It says that both I and even my father's house have sinned. Now, most of the time, this is something that, uh, that we do. Whenever we pray, we don't really make it personal. We don't really see what our part should be in the solution. Okay, um, now when, when Nehemiah uh, uh, did this, I thought, in what way could he have sinned? What was Nehemiah's sin? What was his part in, this, uh, in what was happening in, uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in Jerusalem? Well, it, it's not something that he has done because he's done nothing wrong uh, concerning that. But it must be something that he had not done. 
right? Because he was praying, Lord, both I and my father. It's not, it's not a sin of something that he has done against God, but maybe something that he hasn't done. You know, sometimes when needs present themselves in our lives, it is a rebuke by God to us that why is, this, why is there a need? Why haven't you done anything about that need? So, so Nehemiah was asking, uh, 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 repenting to God. He said, Lord, we have not done something about this. Now forgive my people, forgive me, forgive my father's house. Because there should be something that, and when we learned that in the history before Nehemiah, right? People were trying to build the wall, trying and then they stopped. Trying and then they stopped. God used people at, at certain times to give revival to these people so that they will be uh, courageous enough to start building the wall. But when opposition comes, they stop. Now they know what they should do, but they're not doing anything about it. So, God, so Nehemiah is saying that, uh, uh, Lord, please forgive us for there's a lot of things that we have not done. Right, uh, go, uh, uh, going and, and, and applying this in our time, we see what is happening in our own brethren in the Philippines, with our own country. And there might be something, thinking about it, meditating about, upon it, there might be something that we're forgetting to do. Why did it come to this? Why did it come to this kind of, uh, of, of time? When, when people are not really, uh, 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 what do you call this, not really strong in standing against uh, uh, this bill that, that is about to, uh, that, that, that they wanted to be passed. Why, why, why are there people, Christians, who call themselves Christians, or really afraid to do that? Or really, who are really afraid to stand for the truth? Or really just not obeying God, really, but technically just obeying uh, what their pastors are saying? Why did it come to this time? There might be something that we have not done. Okay? When we pray to God, we just say, Lord, forgive them, help them. No, you should ask God for forgiveness as well because for sure there's something that you should be doing that you're not doing. This is what is Nehemiah is saying. Now, going to verse number 7, it says here, we have dealt very corruptly against thee. Now, Nehemiah was repenting in verse 6. Now, this gives us what, uh, shows us what he was repenting of. We have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments which thou hast commanded thy servant Moses. Nehemiah knows the law of the Lord. Nehemiah knows the law. That's why he can say this. Now, what was he repenting about? He was repenting of the fact that they have not really obeyed what God has told them to do. It was clear when God raised up this king, I forgot the king, uh, last week we studied about it, to allow the children of, Jeru uh, of Israel to go back to Jerusalem, not all of them went back. Only some, and then a lot of them don't want to go back because they're afraid because there was no wall. And then, even if they tried to build the wall, even though they already rebuilt the temple and tried to rebuild the wall, they, they keep on stopping and stopping. So not all of them really went back to Jerusalem. So now, uh, Nehemiah knows that's what God wants them to do. Nehemiah knows that, but, God, but Nehemiah said, Lord, we have not obeyed what you have told us to do. And in our time, in this difficult time, in this time of peril, in, in, in uh, uh, what is happening around us, there are things that God told us to do about it, and we're not doing it. And we should know about that. Sometimes maybe it's a sin of not neglect, but maybe ignorance. But being ignorant about it is neglect in itself, right? Because as a Christian, we are commanded to know what we are supposed to do and do what we're supposed to do. But sometimes we have been too complacent. We have been too comfortable in our position, not looking at what part we should play in what is happening. Now, looking again at Nehemiah, he was a cupbearer. He's the cupbearer of the king of basically the king of the world. This is the most powerful uh, kingdom during this time. Uh, so, so Nehemiah was in a really good place. He was a cupbearer. Although his, although his uh, job may be dangerous at, uh, at a point, but he was in a comfortable position. He can just remain comfortable. He can just remain in the palace and not really bother himself with what's happening in Jerusalem. He can live a happy life. Right? He, sh he, should not, he should not be in involving himself. But again, he knows the word of God. He knows the law of the Lord. And he knows what he should be doing. And looking at that, he knows that he was not doing what he's supposed to do. So he was not contented with that. He's not contented with his state. He was not contented in being, uh, uh, in being just comfortable wherever he is. In verse number 8, we see here. Uh, can you put that, Mil uh, Milka? 
So say, remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, if ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad um, among the nation. Now again, Nehemiah knew exactly why this was happening. Okay? This is something that uh, we can apply in our lives to be skillful in the word of God. To look at what's happening and know exactly in the context of the word of God why it's happening. Right? To always uh, have this default in our mind to see what happened, read the news, see what's happening in our country, in other countries, and look at the Word of God and know exactly why this is happening and know exactly what we should do about it. Because most of the time, we don't know. Most of the time, we don't know what we should be doing. Just the other day, I, uh, I, I was able to ask, uh, uh, because you know, Duterte was, you know, he met with this, I forgot he, uh, its name. With Diaz, right? And then uh, he endorsed the, the, the bill and he was really uh, agreeing with them. And then I, 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 I took a screenshot of that and then uh, asked the admins of the Duterte supporters, and what do you think about this? So now someone replied and he said that uh, as a Christian, we're against this, but we should not be doing anything because this is already prophesied. Right? That is a fatalistic thinking. Uh, uh, thinking that we should not be do, doing anything because we're go, uh, this is, uh, God already said it's happening. Where in the Bible can you see that Paul warned Timothy so that Timothy will think, uh, I cannot do anything about it anyway. I should just not do anything about it. That was not the purpose of the warning. The purpose of the warning, reading uh, the warning at uh, Timothy, Peter, and even, and even Jude, the purpose of the warning is to do exactly to do something about it. Right? To know exactly what's happening, why it's happening, what is, why is it against the Word of God, and what you, should do, uh, what, 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 what you should do about it. I'm mentioning this because I know that maybe some of us here have the same fatalistic mindset. Na, wala na tayong dapat gawin, naka-prophesy naman na yan, hindi natin mapipigilan yan. Yes, but we can do something in our time. Right? If Nehemiah says that I cannot do anything about this anyway, uh, uh, this is the fault of Jerusalem, this is the fault of the people before me, so let them deal with it. I'm, I'm here in the palace, I should not be dealing with it, but Nehemiah said, this is my fault as well. I'm not doing anything. And this is a blessing if we can look a situa at the situation, know exactly why it's happening, and know exactly what you should be doing about it. And in verse 10, we see here, uh, um, and, and I'm, I'm going a bit fast, but we're, we're going back to some things here. In verse 10, we see here that a lot of words, one word that is all repeated many times was thy. Now these are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and thy strong hand. Nehemiah realizes and knows that what's happening here is all about God. It's all about God. The reason why they're in this place is because they disobeyed God. The reason why they can be saved is they have, if they are going to obey God. And this is something that we can learn in our lives as well. When God plays a burden in our hearts, when God uh, makes us see something, a need, or, or, or whatever, we should be able to really, uh, what they call this, know the big picture that all of this is about God. Right, even if God uses us and, and, and we do something about it and, and, and we have done something about it and, and uh, what they call this, we solve the problem, it is still about the glory of God. It's not really about you. So now, Nehemiah knows that they're in this position because they disobeyed God and they can only escape this position if they will turn to God and obey Him. Yeah. And, 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 and I just want to uh, park here in verse number 11. His la in the last uh, part of his uh, prayer, it says here, O Lord, I beseech thee, let thine, now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant, and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name, and prosper. I pray thee, thy servant, this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. Most of the time, we are guilty with well-wishing. We're, gu we're guilty of that. We see a need, we pray for them, I hope God helps you. We see a need, we pray about it. I hope God does something about it. Not thinking that we can be a part of the solution to that need. Now, Nehemiah is praying for them. Nehemiah can just stop at prayer. I can just pray every day for Jerusalem, for God to do something there. But Nehemiah is not contented. Nehemiah has a, a what they call this, has a bias for action. He's praying that God use me as a solution to this problem. He's not just well-wishing. He's not just saying, I hope Jerusalem will be okay. I hope they will be able to rebuild the wall. But he's saying, God, 
Show me my part. Show me how you can use me in order to be a uh, solution to this problem. And most of the time, we're guilty of this. In, in, John chap in James chapter 2, verse 14 to 17, the Bible says, What did it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. It's not enough to just pray about it. It is correct to pray about it at first, but it's not just in enough to just pray about it. What we should do is ask God what we can do about it as well. And ask God to guide us, to show us our part in the solution of the problem. Most of the times we pray about a problem, but we're not willing to be part of the solution. We just don't want to be uncomfortable. We don't want to be, uh, to be bothered. I pray for it. That's enough. That's my job. All we have to do is pray. That is not the will of God. The will of God is if God placed that burden in your heart, God wants you to do something about it. Not just to pray for it. Anyone can pray for anything, but that doesn't stop there. Okay, I hear a lot of uh, uh, preachers, I hear a lot of even uh, uh, spiritual Christians saying, let's just pray about it, which is correct, but it doesn't stop there. We should do something about it. it, it it's correct that we should, the default response should be prayer, but, the, but our heart should be, uh, the, our prayer should be a prayer of, Lord, tell me what I can do about it. What's happening in our country today, and even in the churches in the Philippines, and, 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 and basically everywhere around the world, is there is a really a falling away from the faith, falling away from the truth. And we know it's happening, we, we are praying about it, but we are not really willing to be part of the solution of the problem. We're not willing to be uncomfortable. We're, we just want to stay in our comfort zone. We just want to, be, uh, where, to continue doing what we're doing, but we're really not willing to be part of the solution. You know, whatever you think you are, I mean, you, you might see yourself as a very small person who, who really can't do a lot about it. I'm not really that influential. But, you know, God can use anyone who's willing and available to be used of Him. And God can use that. And, we can, and this thing can still turn around. There can still be a revival in churches. There can still be a revival even in a country that has uh, fallen far away from the Lord if the people of God will be willing to do something about it. You know, the solution is not in the government. The solution is not us joining the government and changing the law or, or whatever and passing a law that, that, that is really uh, biblical. The solution is people of God continuing to obey the will of the Lord, continuing to live lives that are worthy of our calling so that people will see Christ in us and that we can make a difference in this world. And, 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 and as we pray about it, as we pray about what God wants us to do, as we pray about what God wants, uh, 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 what is happening around us, we should be at the same time willing if God wants to use us as a solution to that problem. Mga kapatid, hindi po tayo tinawag ng Panginoon para lang maging komportable. Hindi po tayo tinawag lang ng Panginoon para uh, maging, mag, mag, maging magkakaibigan. Hindi po tayo tinawag lang ng Panginoon para maging masaya sa buhay na to. God called us for a purpose and that purpose is for us to make a difference in whatever place God, God, uh, uh, God placed us into. To make that, that difference. And we can only make that difference if we are willing to do that in the first place. Now, again, Nehemiah was praying for months, day and night. He was praying for months. He was not just praying. He was thinking of a solution. And, and we're going to uh, study chapter 2 uh, whenever next time I preach. But then, uh, we will see as he prays, uh, here in the few verses here, as he prays, God is slowly building in his mind the plan that God wants. Slowly, God is, is telling him, what are you going to do about it? Who are the people you're going to talk to? And God is arranging everything around him so that his desire will be met because his desire is according to the will of God. So that this, his, his desire will be met. And this is something that we should learn. To patiently pray, right? To patiently wait on what the Lord wants us to do. But knowing about it, we should act immediately. Hindi lang po, okay, alam ko na, continue praying pa. Hindi. When God makes his will clear in your life, Act immediately. Act upon it. Don't delay it. Obey the Lord. But make sure that it's from the Lord. Kasi, kasi minsan po, kaya din naman sagutin ng diablo yung panalangin natin. Mananalangin tayo, 
maybe if we if we utter if we say it out loud the devil can hear it maybe the devil can do something about it na para, para ma, malihis ka sa kalooban ng Panginoon that's why you need to have uh, you need to have this uh, discerning spirit this discerning heart to do something now Nehemiah here is in a very awkward position he doesn't know kung kakayanin ba niya itong panawagan ng Panginoon sa buhay niya he's a mere he's merely a cupbearer now, even though he's close to the king, he might not have that influence to really do something about it in Jerusalem. That's why he's very careful. Papaano kung nung narinig niya, agad siya pumunta sa king. King, tulungan mo naman ako, dapat ma- maayos natin sa Jerusalem. He, he might not have uh, gotten the, the result that he wanted. But he prayed patiently for months, day and night. He didn't stop. And his prayer is something that is personal prayer. He, he owned the sin. He told God, it's my fault, Lord. I'm not doing anything. I should have known about this. Maybe he's thinking, I should have inquired about this long ago. And I should have done something about this long ago. Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive my family. Please forgive my people. We are going to do something about it. He didn't only make it just personal. He made, he made sure that as he was praying, he was willing to be used of God as a part of that solution. And I, and, and, and I would just like to challenge you this morning that as, we, as God plays burdens in our hearts, and as God gives us uh, these uh, goals in our minds and whatever your desire is, to continue praying about it. But to continue to be willing to be part of that solution. Not to be passive, not to be complacent, but you are going to be part of that solution. Don't be fatalistic. Don't, don't, don't give up hope. You can do something about it. Even though if you just make a difference with a few friends. Even though if you just make a difference with your own family. That is still a big difference because if God will change their lives, they can influence other people as well. Kaya nga po, po tayong mag-give up. And, and, and every time that I look at the, uh, the situation, actually, it, it can really frustrate you. Because a lot of people are being unbelievers uh, na hindi naman agree talaga dun sa bill na pinap, uh, sogi bill. Sila yung maingay. Mga kristyano, walang sinasabi. Right? Wala. At saka yung pambato natin na si, ano, si, si brother, sabi niya na, kaya nga sila pumunta doon para meron silang platform at sabihin yung katotohanan. Napakatahimik. Walang sinasabi. When he's already in a great position to speak about it, but he's not doing anything about it. Even sa atin, baka meron sa atin dito na, wala, na hindi rin naman tayo, ano ba namang difference na magagawa kung sasabihin ko sa Facebook na I don't agree? Meron ba namang magagawa yun? Who knows? Pero uh, mas, mas pangit kung hindi mo na, hindi, hindi ka na, you don't you didn't let people know what where you stand at lalong wala mangyayari. But if you do something about it, some, something might happen. God might use it. Kaya nga po huwag tayong matakot, eh, baka ma-offend ko yung mga, mga kaibigan kong bakla. What kind of thinking is that? Right? You, of course, the truth will offend them. And it should offend them. But if you're afraid to offend them, then you don't really love them. You don't really love them. Unti-untiin ko na lang sila. Uh, uh, para bang ibang approach na lang gawin ko sa kanila, kaibiganin or whatever. The Bible is clear to speak against error. To speak against all these things. And God will use you even in the lives of other people. God used Nehemiah for the whole country, uh, for the whole uh, country of Israel. But God may, may not use us for the whole country of the Philippines. But God can use us for a few people. For a few people, or maybe yung purpose lang pag post mo will encourage someone else to post as well. Right? Yung purpose lang ng pag stand mo will encourage someone else, hey, meron din palang naninindigan, ako din. Hindi pala sila natakot, ako din. And revival can come from that. Kaya po wag po tayo matakot. I'm saying na masyado kasi contentious, masyadong hindi Christ-like. I just don't understand that. Okay? Na hindi siya Christ-like. Because Christ was not afraid to speak His mind when he was here on earth. He was not afraid to speak in his mind even though he knows that people who will hear it will get hurt and will be offended. He was not afraid. He actually said very hurtful words. I'm not saying that, uh, na, but, but of course in the proper context because he's speaking, he's speaking to these Pharisees, but the point is he was not afraid. He was mad at the things that are, uh, at things that are happening that are against his father's will. And we should have that same emotion. Right? Kung hindi po yan ang ating priority sa buhay natin, what is your priority? Ano yung inaalam mo? What are you inquiring about? What are you praying about? What are you asking God to use you about? To use you with? Kaya nga po mga kapatid, it 
so it says a lot about us. Kung hindi po tayo involved sa sa laban na to, kung hindi po tayo involved sa sa pakik sa paninindigan sa katotohanan, then talaga pong totoo nga na patuloy nang patuloy na palala ng palala ang sitwasyon. But God can use us. And a lot of people are standing. A lot of people are standing and maybe they're standing because they saw some of us standing as well. And we just have to keep on doing that. Just like Nehemiah, keep on praying. Kaya nga po, I know brother, I don't know is if it's brother Haji who, who prayed who preached prayed. Preach uh last week, na ba yung yung about sa being a soldier of Christ. Uh we know that we're soldiers of Christ, but I, I notice as I as I meditate upon it, sometimes we take a little we take it a little bit the 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 illustration or the example we take it a little bit too far, right? Of course, the Bible says we are soldiers of Christ because we are to endure hardness like soldiers, and it's the reason why we're compared to soldiers is because we have to endure hardness, right? Sometimes we go too far as going to the uh, ranks of a soldier, may general, may major, whatever. Hindi po ganun kalayo dapat natin itake yung yung uh, yung analogy na yon. We're soldiers because we have to endure. That's it. Okay? Because we can say, kasi po marami ngayon na passive masyado. Eh kasi meron namang mga medic. No. You're a soldier. Hindi, hindi God said you're a soldier just because you need to endure hardness. But we all have to fight. Okay, we all have to do that. Hindi po, even though, okay, I, I'm, do, I'm doing my battle the way I know, I know how to do it. But sometimes, excuse na lang yun eh. Pero meron naman talagang, may mga uh, gumagawa naman talaga ng sarili nilang paraan and maybe it's effective. But sometimes, excuse na lang yun. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm doing it the way that I want to do it. But in the back of your mind, because I don't want to be uncomfortable. Because I don't want to be inconvenienced. Because I don't want any trouble in my life. That is the wrong thinking. Right? Pero kung what you're doing is effective and it's really working, keep on doing that. But at the same time, if God shows you na meron ka pang mas maraming magagawa, why not do it? Meron pa. Kaya ko pang dagdagan, do it. Kaya ko pang manindigan, do it. Kaya ko pang gawin ito, do it. Kaya ko pang magpray, kaya ko pang gawin ito. Gawin pa natin mga kapatid because our lives is just really about this. Wala na pong iba. It's just really about this, standing for what's right and making a difference in this world. And somehow, uh, uh, by God's grace, we can give glory to the name of the Lord by making a difference even in these perilous times that we are in. Don't be, don't be fatalistic. Don't be fatalistic. God can use us just like Nehemiah. And, and hopefully, uh, next week, we see the steps uh, in, in obeying the will of God in our lives when, once we pray about it. Let us go to God in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for our uh, message. We thank you for the prayer of Nehemiah, how we see...